Okay, so I'm going to use Packet Tracer to um, just as a diagram of what we're trying to do. Although we're doing this actually on um, actual routers in the lab, uh, still I'm just going to use this as a diagram. So we've configured our clients, right? And you saw that in the um, in the video. We've got two PCs. We don't have a server. We just have two PCs. We have two routers, and we've just configured this router right here, and I'll call it. R1, okay, router 1, I'll call this one just the label here, R2, right? And on this router we configured an interface on fast ethernet and we gave it 192.168.1.1 and on this interface, on the serial interface, which is the DCE, we gave it 10.0.0.1 slash 8 and this one because uh, it had an 8-bit subnet mask and this one was slash 24 24-bit subnet mask alright so we got this interface right here serial and we got this one the Ethernet interface configured now we need to do the same thing for the other router um, and that's th that's all that should be on the routers now when I actually looked at the router I noticed that there was a static route in there kinda like jumping ahead so let's get rid of that really quickly. I'm just going to show you how I get rid of it. Um, I'm going to put in a configure terminal command to get to global config. And the way I get rid of it is just put a no in front and type out the command again. So no IP route 0 .0 0.0.0.0 and 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0. And I'll be talking about this in a minute. OK. So we get rid of that, do control C, and then a show run. And you can see that we've put in a few commands. No logging console to stop the output from going to the console window. We've configured our Ethernet interface right here, and we've configured our serial zero interface right here. Okay? And that's represented in this picture here. What we need to do is configure this router here, R2. And what we're going to do is we're going to put on its Ethernet interface, which is this interface right here, this, this black one right here, we're going to put in um, 172.16.0.1 slash 16. Okay? And that's going to go on this interface basically right there. Okay? This interface. And this one was on this interface. And then on the serial interface right here, we're going to put 10, and by the way, this is the DTE side, so it doesn't get a clock rate on the serial interface, 10.0.0.2 slash 8, okay, and that is going to be on this interface right there, right, and so this is the 10 network over here and the 192.168.1 network here and the 172.16 network here. And so we're going to configure this router right now. I'm, I'm counseled into router 1 right now through my laptop, not through one of the clients that are set up, but through a console cable right into the router 1. And I can just actually unplug the um, console cable and put it in the other router and move to that router. So um, I'm going to do that in a second, but before I do it, I'm going to change the name of this router to router 1, so when you're looking at this, you'll know which router we're in. So I'll do a configure terminal, go to global config mode, and I'll change the router's name. Host name R1. Okay, and now you can see that the prompt here has changed from router to R1. All right, I'll do a control C on my keyboard. So now you know that we are in hit enter R1, right? All right, I'm going to take out this um, console cable out of the router and I will put it into the other router. Okay. So I just put it in the other router. And well now you see now when I hit enter, it went back to router. Now I'm in a totally different router. So um, let's take a look at its configuration and we'll see that it actually has already been configured. 
I'll do show run, which is a short for show running config. Oh, first I have to do enable to get to privileged mode, and then I can do a show run. And you can see in this one, the Ethernet has been um, configured to 172.16.0.1.255.255.0.0. So it's the 172.16 network host 01. The serial has been configured to 10.0.0.2 with a 255.0.0 um, subnet mask. And you can see that the serial interface has no um, clock rate on it. And we have a static route going uh, a certain way, which we need to get rid of and then put in again. Um, so I'll get rid of that really quickly. Also, you can see that we are getting output to the um, updates and computer information, router information to the console window, um, which we can turn off too to make it easier for the tutorial. Configure terminal puts me in global config mo mode. I'll do no logging console so we don't get the output to the window anymore. I'll change the host name to R2. So now we know it's router 2, the top router in our diagram. And I'll get rid of the, um, the static IP route. So if I just actually, well, no, I don't have the command in my memory buffer. So um, in my command buffer, command history, that is. IP, no, I'm going to say no IP route. 192.168.1. to the zero network, the 1.0 network, and then the subnet mask, and then the next top interface, 10.0.0.1. Okay, so now I have the static route, this IP route will be gone if I do a show run command. So I'll do that, show run. And you'll see the Ethernet's there. The serial is um, configured here, no clock rate, because it's the DTE. And the static route is not there, right? So essentially, we have the situation that we were hoping for. We've got the IP address configured on this interface, IP address on this interface, IP address on this interface, IP address on this interface, and clock rate. And we have an IP address on the router interface here, and an IP address on this interface. So the two clients have their IP addresses. The routers have two IP addresses each on each interface, one on each interface. And so, you know, so now you could try to ping across, and in reality, it won't work until you put a um, static route. Okay, and I explained in a previous tutorial why that is. Um, the router, this router. Let's look at router 2 first. It knows about the 172.16 network, and it knows about the 10 network, but it doesn't know about the 192.168.1 network. So it will not be able to route packets to that network. It also doesn't have a gateway of last resort or a default route. So if, if, uh, if somebody tries to send something to the 172.16, it can do that. Also, if tr someone tries to send something to the 10 network, it can do that but it can't send anything to the 192.168 network if it doesn't know about it. If we look at the show IP route to look at our routing table, we should see two routes. We see the 172.16 on the Ethernet, right? But we should also see the, um, we should also see the serial interface too. Okay, we'll just do that again. Wait, where is, let's try to ping 10.0.0.2 or dot one. And it looks like it's not working. And our serial interface is down. So I'm gonna have to go to the router and look to make sure everything's plugged in okay. On the router I see two green lights it looks like everything's plugged in okay. So maybe what I'll do is just reconfigure that or shut it down or let's reconfigure it.